Good evening and welcome. It is my privilege to welcome you on behalf of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this time of worship as we celebrate Christmas, uh, the, the time that God comes to us, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so we gather here this evening to give God thanks and praise for the, for the blessing of eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate light and the sacrament of, of Holy Communion. Amen. <laughs> unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace let us pray almighty god you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go ahead and remain standing for carol number 234, O Come All Ye Faithful. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the gift of eternal life that we 
celebrate this evening. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for this Christmas gift. Um, came as a babe, yet our King, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for the privilege of coming to this house this evening to give you thanks and praise for the blessings of the day, the blessings that no matter where we find ourselves in life, no matter what we have done, uh, you are with us, you sustain us, you love us, you redeem us and call us your own. And Lord Jesus, on this, on this Christmas Eve, uh, we give you thanks for the, for the birth of new beginnings for us. Lord Jesus, we do lift up to you those who cannot be here. Many are sick in our community here this night, and we just pray for health for them. We pray for those who are lonely this evening, those who are mourning, uh, those who are brokenhearted, those who are suffering in, in all different sorts of ways, Lord God. We just, we do pray your watch care upon them. Lord, we pray for where, in our, in our world where there is no peace, that your peace may intercede in those places, and your word may become flesh and dwell within them as well. Uh, Lord God, we, we thank you for family, for friends. We thank you for this church. We thank you for our community and world. Most of all, this evening, we come to celebrate the eternal thanksgiving of, of the gift you've given us this day. Bless us, keep us, and enliven our souls and set us free to do your work. These things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, what can I give him, lowly as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him, give my heart? Lord God, we give you thanks for our blessings and the opportunity to share those blessings with your ongoing ministry. Lord God, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter who we are, help us to see all that you have given us, that we may return a portion so all may know the good news of the saving grace of you in their life. Bless and sanctify this offering we now present before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, holy night, the stars were brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh hear the angel's voices, oh night divine. When 
Christ was born. O night, O holy night, O night divine, truly he taught us to love one another. His love is love and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break for the slave is a brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in Grateful chorus raise, we let all within praise his holy name. Fall on your knees, oh hear the angel voice says, oh no. Christ was born, O night, O holy night, O night The first scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You've enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you've shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning and will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end, and will, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Please remain seated and sing number 245, the first Noel.
And the gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of all the Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who he was pledged to be married and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been foretold. There are those in the world and in our nation that hear the words that were just spoken, this incredible story of the birth of Jesus, and they say this is nothing more than a fairy tale, a fabrication in someone's mind, a nice story to give warm and fuzzies, made eventually to stimulate retail sales at the end of every year. They say this story of the birth of Jesus is outlandish. It is unbelievable. How could the Son of God, if a God existed anyhow, could possibly be born in a manger, surrounded by doting parents, some cows, some sheep, some pigs, some shepherds, some goats. I don't want to leave dogs out. And anybody else who might have been there, how could this be? In fact, we could say the same thing about most things in the Bible. Now, most of these stories are utterly fantastic. How could they possibly have been taking place? They're amazing, unbelievable. But what's so different about our age today? We also look at our world, and we can also say that there are many things that happen around us that are unbelievable. They are outlandish. They shouldn't happen. They can't happen. That are beyond our comprehension. So why not have the birth of our salvation come in the midst of all that? Ever since 1965, when Linus told us the true meaning of Christmas during Charlie Brown's, the Charlie Brown Christmas, we have been trying to understand what this Christmas thing is all about. We still want everything just perfect, don't we? We want everything just right in our Christmas celebration. We want to make sure that all the candles are just right, all the poinsettias are just right, that all the music is just right, and everything at home has to be just perfect. All the meals have to be just the way that we like them. We want to create something special. The last thing we need is a dirty, old, stinking manger. 
with dirty old stinking shepherds to boot. We want something special for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But because God so loved the world, he came to us as we are. All of our dirt, all of our messes, all of the stuff that we got into that we shouldn't have gotten into, God comes to us where we are amidst the stuff of life. That seems to me to be the miracle that we're celebrating this evening. That no matter who we think we are, no matter the people we are trying to be, God is here. Even though the Christmas tree might not all work, some of the lights might blink, some not work at all. The electricity might go all the way, not go all the way up to the top. Cookies might have gotten burnt. The reality is, saints, some of our lives are not fairy tales. Some of our lives are not perfectly laid out. Some of our lives are not exactly how we would like them to be. I don't know about all of you, but I confess that's where my life is. But the joy is that God comes to us in the midst of all of who we are. Even though we may live in the darkened world, there is light. There is hope for the hopeless. There is joy for the joyless. Bottom line is, we matter. We matter to God. That's why we gather here this evening. It is unbelievable. It is outlandish. It is surreal. But it is a fact. You know, it's kind of fun to prepare. I love to plan things out. I drive the staff crazy here at the church. They want me to just shut up every once in a while. I see a few nodding their heads, yeah. Everything has to be just right. I like to prepare for Christmas. I like to kind of plan things out. I don't even mind going to the mall once. Early before other people show up. I don't mind that too much. But you know, in our haste to prepare, in our haste to plan, we easily forget that God has called us to live every moment. That God has called us to live in the love that he's given to us. That every moment of our life is important. No matter how trivial, no matter how major, in all those moments in between, God is calling us to live those moments. Certainly with an eye on the future. But God's light shines every time we acknowledge God as our salvation. To live in the moment means to celebrate the moment. Means to know that no matter what kind of junk we get ourselves into, God will always be in the mix. You've heard the expression, it's better to give than receive. I stand here before you this evening to say, I think it's better to receive. Well, I'm not talking about boxed up gifts or gift cards or anything like that. It's profoundly a privilege to receive the Holy Spirit, 
to receive the love of God, to receive the joy that has no understanding, transcends understanding. It is a joy to receive that that God has given us, and then it is a true joy to share that gift through our witness to another. It is blessed to receive. It is blessed to give. That's what joy is all about. That's how we experience the God moments every moment. You know, when the angel told the shepherds, and this is probably the, the, the most amazing text in those 20 verses that Kelly read, is that the angel said, I bring you good news of a great joy to all people, all people, even to me, even to you, even to the dregs of society, in our opinion, not to God's. God's word comes to all people. That's the good news. That's the great joy. And you know what? We're given that gift today, right now. All we have to do is open our hearts and open our souls to experience it. God's love. That's what grace is all about. That is grace. And God calls us to enjoy our life, to celebrate our life every moment. One of my favorite authors, and I can't remember which book it was in, but Len Sweet talked about when he was a child and went into church, and he said church was okay. But he saw the people in the church, and he said, you know, church folk are good people in a bad mood. <laughs> and I thought about that for a second. I said, isn't that a terrible thing to say? Especially when you have the spirit of the Lord, when you have the faith. The last thing that someone ought to say about, about us church folk is that we're good people in a bad mood. I think God is, is, is transcendent enough to come into our lives and give us the joy of every moment and that our witness will be God's joy. That as we accept this gift of everlasting life, this, this gift that came through a child born in a stable, that we can't help but exude the joy, that we can't help but celebrate every moment. This Advent season, this four weeks build up to Christmas Eve, caused me to realize something, especially to live in that moment every moment. And as I realized that, started to pray for people. Always pray for folk. But especially for those who are distraught. Who always seem to be angry. Who always seem to be frustrated. Oh, I pray for them. Just that they would know the joy of knowing our Savior. I pray for them. I pray for those who don't have the peace of knowing Christ. I pray for those that, that mourn without Christ by their side. I pray for those in the regions of the world that are besieged by violence in this nation as well. You know, I think that Jesus came in this unbelievable way to make faith absolutely believable, livable, and real, even in an unreal way. Saints, God has given us a gift this evening, a gift that's not going to break, a gift that's not going to be thrown away, a gift that will never wear out. 
And sometimes I think God re-gifts to us. Have you ever re-gifted anything? Nobody's going to nobody's going to say yes, I know that. I'm not going to say whether I have or haven't. I just heard rumors that, that people do that every once in a while. But you know, I think God re-gifts us to this time of year. And I think God re-gifts us in this way. I think God uh, allows us to look back on those times that we really felt God's presence in our life. So we can reflect upon when God was there to build up our time today. I was in the grocery store once and I saw an orange. Even bought a couple. And I was looking there and there was a guy who was early in the morning and I'm not really prone to tears so I didn't cry but I had a little lump in my throat. And I said, I'd like to have an orange. And I said, well, maybe I might like to have a case of oranges. Maybe a couple more. Because I was thinking about growing up, my mom always gave me an orange in my stocking. And I thought about that orange, and I thought about the love that it took to put that uh, uh, along with what Santa Claus put in my stocking. I said, what a joy. What a joy. And then last week, if you were here for our Christmas cantata and the choir was singing, a gift that was given... And the week prior, I went to the Cleveland Orchestra Choir. They sounded pretty close to the same. I, I kid you not. And I remember a gift that long ago I put on a back shelf. But God brought it back. You see, God re-gifts when we need it. God reminds us during this year the blessings of our day both big and small. So saints, you have been given an incredible gift tonight. The gift of God's love, the gift of God's grace, God's redeeming grace. That wherever we find ourselves, dirt and all, God is there. My prayer for all of us is that we find room in our hearts and in our soul for this Jesus the Christ. That we may be transformed and enlivened in soul and experience God's grace every moment of our being. One last thing before I take my leave here. I don't think faith was ever intended to be dull and boring. I think it's an exciting, incredible thing. And when you live it, you can't help but proclaim it. I'm glad Jesus came to us in an unbelievable, outlandish way. Enjoy this new life that God has given to us. Merry Christmas and have fun with this gift that you have been given this evening. Amen. This evening, we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. This table is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church nor the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all are welcome to this place. All who seek a closer relationship with God and with one another. So we come here with faith, acknowledging our own human faults, acknowledging our humility, acknowledging that though we fall and trip, do dumb things, God redeems us and sets us free. So come with an open heart, a heart filled with God's grace. Will you please turn to page 13 of your hymnal? 
and let us pray together the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread, blessed it, gave thanks to you, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, giving thanks to you, blessed it, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Will those helping with communion please come forward? to the Lord's table.
Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this blessing of eternal life that we celebrate as we partake of your body and of your blood as one body. Lord God, bless us by the power of your Holy Spirit that as we consume uh, this everlasting gift that we may be transformed and enlivened by your Spirit to go forth from this place in ministry to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the tradition of the church. We will conclude this time of worship with the singing of Silent Night and consider as you pass the light of Christ down uh, your, the aisles and be careful too with, with the wax and everything that uh, it symbolizes God's grace and God's light that is available to everyone. So uh, let us uh, pass the light of Christ to each other and when all candles are lit then we then the lights will be turned down and we'll sing silent night together <laughs>
Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the gift of the peace that you have offered us this night. Bless us as we leave this place with your presence, your joy, your hope, and your love. May we cherish the gift that you've given us this night, that we may share it with all of those around us. Offer us blessings and your grace now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>